Okay, tonight we're going to go on a ghost hunt. We're headed out to Santa Teresa Springs. Local legend has it that Bernal, who was one of the early settlers of San Jose, um, bought the land and he heard the legend from Native Americans, how a beautiful woman walked through and touched a rock and caused the spring to form and the pond to form. Other stories of the area also include the stories of a young girl who was packing her suitcase and her parents came home. She was off to run off with her lover and her parents tried to stop her. One of the stories says that she had telekinetic powers and she looked at them and they were suddenly thrown out in the barn and hung by the neck till dead. She felt guilty. She walked out to the lake, to the big pond, and she's tried to kill herself by walking out. And as she was part ways up to about her knees, a giant hand came up and grabbed her and pulled her the rest of the way in. So this is the legend we're going to explore tonight. We're going to go to the pond and we're going to go to the barn. So Dottie's Pond, also known as Santa Teresa Springs, is located in Santa Teresa Park, San Jose, California. So we've never been here before, but we're off on our quest. When suddenly our meters yeah. start to go Show off. What's around us? As we're debunking the EMF readings due to the power lines, I see some white lights up here. You I pointed but it this turns way out they were just houses across the road. If you point it at the power lines, it starts reading. But if we point it away from it, it stops reading. So, we... that's no, changing it still does it. Okay. Okay, on with the quest. Got to find the pond. Notice as we're hiking up the hill, white lights flashing by real quickly. We didn't notice them at the time. They did become apparent during edit. Manatees? I don't know if he stands for still. So we continue on our quest to the pond and we keep getting EMF readings, but once again, we debunk them by finding out that they're related to power lines above us. So we finally find the pond. Turns out if we stayed on the paved trail instead of hike through the poison oak, we would have come right to it. So the water is very dark but almost anticlimactic. It doesn't seem haunted at all. It just seems like a dark pond. So the only thing left to do, see if we can contact you. All right, the spirits that are here, feel free to make yourself known. Alex and I are believers. <laughs> Kevin and Vicky, not so much. Prove to them that you're real. Give us a sign. Maybe some bubbling in the water. I do want to say I believe they exist, I just don't think we have the methods to interact with them. I believe spirits and souls are all over the place. I just don't think they're meant for us to talk with them, right? interact with them. I think that's true, but I think there's some that are not at peace, or that have missions, where they need to talk to somebody, to tell somebody something. But they're not at peace. Yeah, mine's flat. Should we go up above it here? We can also go on the bridge. Yeah, or this one. the higher one. Yeah. Are you guys getting any readings at all? No. This is, I would expect, to be the deep place, right? Either right there or somehow getting a reading from the center of the pond. Well, I think it's a bus. I don't think we've found any ghosts. It was fun exploring, though. Yeah. All right. Any spirits that may have attached to us? We mean you no harm. Let us go and do not follow us home. 
Coming down from the spring, Alex begins to get numbers on her EMF reader that are not attributable to any kind of power lines or power source. What kind of numbers are you getting? I'm getting zero. For, is this for volt meters? I'm in volt 13, 15. I got a four. You are in the 14th. I'm getting absolutely nothing. I got a six, a seven. How funny I'm like moving and sound really like that. There's a seven. Yeah, you can see a it on six. You can it's see it on both eight. Rick's and Alex's. Six. A five. Tools. Let's see if I don't face the wires. Oh, it goes down. It's okay, but there's no wires straight in front of you. Look. Yeah, there's the wires on the. Yeah, but hey, my phone, my my device was picking up the ones over there, but not these. Unless your ears are much more sensitive. It's a little bit direction. So it should be that. It is when you're pointing to the middle of the field. As I raise mine up to the sky, I'm at 25, 27, 28, 30, 34. If I'm straight up, 36. It might be the wire. But it doesn't put you in a question the wire. The height, yeah. If I bring it down, my numbers drop. It's in Z, Kevin. But look over here. So there are wires in the above us. Oh, there's wires over there. But look I'm getting at, closer to their height. Yeah, but what about Rick? Yes. I'm 37 there, and I come down, and I um. I go see. I'm 16, going up. 12, go up. 12, 11. Yeah, yeah I was just hitting 40 at Rick's head height. <laughs> I'm gonna put it right next to Rick. Because <laughs> Rick goes yeah. when you were slowly starting to walk into the field, I started to get like a tingling on my back, and I felt a buzzy feeling like right in my ear, and got the shivers. Do you oh, that's really good. Get that? Shivers, yes, not the buzzy feeling in the ear. And the back? Yes, but it was like a buzzing feeling, almost as like a bee or a gnat was in my ear, but there was nothing there. Wow. Are you sure? I wish I had one. After Kevin's experience with the buzzing behind his ear, it was time to head for the barn. There's another entrance back here to the side as well. Oh, that's our cake cake building. Why does it That's what I mean. That's why I don't know if it's so much. Okay, so we're approaching the barn with our EMF meters, and we're not getting any readings at all. Now, the barn is where uh, Dottie's parents supposedly died hanged by the neck. Now, the legend said that it was through her telekinetic powers that Dorothy was able to uh, throw her parents up there and have them hang. We should be able to receive some kind of reading here if the legend is true. Might be too far away. No. So I think it's about time to call it a day. We didn't find any ghost. But we did get a couple of readings on an EMF meter that may or may not have been related to a power line. We also saw some orbs that we caught in edit. So it was a good time. And it's always fun to go out with Alex and Kevin. Anyhow, till next time.